In this tutorial we will learn the basics of PID control using the cart pole problem. We also will learn how to automatically find gains for a model using genetic algorithm. PID control is widely used in various industrial fields. Despite its relatively simple theory, it is efficient and easy to use. So, what is PID control? Here is a PID control scheme. If you are into robotics, you might have seen this scheme before. P stands for proportion. Proportional gain KP is multiplied by the difference of target value and the observed value from the system. But as we can see in the graph, since controller needs an error to control the system, the output inevitably becomes vibrational. To solve this problem, I that is integration, is used. This part integrates all errors to the current time point. So, the controller is able to generate appropriate control signal even when there is currently no error between the target and the system output. D stands for differentiation. This part is used to improve controller response. If we increase the D gain value, the output of the control signal becomes like the yellow line on the graph. But increasing response also means that the system will likely overshoot its target value. To make the best of PID control, it is very important to find appropriate PID gain values for your system. This is an example of PID gains being tuned well. And this is when PID gains are not appropriate for the system. There are many methods how to tune PID gains. Here I will briefly describe two of them. The first is Ziegler Nichols method. It is performed by setting the I and D gains to zero, and then raising the proportional gain until the system begins to oscillate. Then the proportional gain is reduced to a predetermined amount and the integral and differential gains are set as a function of oscillation period. The second is pole placement method. Once the desired rise time, settling time and percentage of overshoot of the closed loop system step response have been specified, the computation of the controller is performed automatically. The design guidelines are obtained from a mixture of theoretical and heuristic results. Generally, all methods require guess and check process or a modeling and computation, and it could take a lot of time. As an alternative solution, instead of modeling our system, we will build it in the simulator, and by applying genetic algorithm, we will find the PID gains automatically. Here is the scheme. There is a cart pole model in gazebo. The simulation is performed for 5 seconds. Each time step, the pole height and cart displacement from the center are obtained. After the simulation, the sum of pole height and cart displacement are passed to the genetic algorithm and evaluated. The genetic algorithm passes a new set of PID gains to the simulator and the simulation starts once again. The objective is to find PID gains to maximize pole height, that is keep the pole straight as much as possible and minimize cart displacement from the center. Before doing the simulation, let's see what a genetic algorithm is. Genetic algorithm imitates the process of natural selection. Individual solutions compete to propagate to the next level. Here is how the algorithm works. Firstly, initialization is done. While initializing, we define population. Population consists of several individuals. Each individual has a gene which is in our case one of the PID gains. The second stage is evaluation. Each individual is evaluated based on the objective function. In our case the objective is to keep the pole as straight as possible and keep the cart as near to the center as possible. Next, selection is done. There are many ways to do selection. One of them called tournament. This method selects the best individual among several randomly selected individuals. Another method called roulette. 
This method selects individual I with probability PI. Here, FI is a fitness of each individual. Note that each method has its own advantages and disadvantages, so it should be chosen according to the problem we are trying to solve. The fourth stage is recombination. At this state crossover operation is executed that modify the input individuals. There are several ways to do it. One point crossover is when a point on both parents' chromosomes is picked randomly and designated a crossover point. Bits to the right of that point are swapped between the two parent chromosomes. This results in two offspring, each carrying some genetic information from both parents. In two points crossover, two crossover points are picked randomly from the parent chromosomes. The bits in between the two points are swapped between the parents. The fifth state is mutation. Mutation modifies randomly selected individuals' genes. It is not necessary, but it prevents the algorithm to fall into local optimal solution. After mutation, evaluation is done and if it is not the last generation, the loop starts once again. Now let's see the code. In this tutorial, we use the evolutionary algorithm framework deep. It is flexible and easy to use. To get link position we need to import link states. And here empty service type is imported to reset the simulation. The empty type means the service call sends no data when making a request and receives no data when receiving a response. This is a definition of a publisher which will publish control signal for a cart. In this line we define that cart position should be minimal and pole height should be maximum. The minus sign and the plus sign correspond to the minimum and maximum respectively. The order of evaluation should be the same as the order of variables returned from the evaluation function. Here, individual type is defined. Fitness multi means that an individual has several objectives. In the get cart pose function, link positions and velocities necessary for optimization are obtained. Note that in the real robot, these values should be obtained using IMU sensors or encoders, but in this simulation, to focus on the theory, we will use perfect values. In this function cart, control and calculation of cart sum displacement and pole sum height is done. Here, each gene value of an individual is substituted to the PID controller gain. In this part, simulation reset is done. Note that the simulation reset is done for each individual, because each individual has a different gene set. Simulation runs for 1000 steps with each step lasting for 5 milliseconds. Each time step, Pole sum height is updated with the current value. And pole sum displacement is also updated with the absolute value of cart displacement. This is a PID controller for pole rotation. Note that yaw angle of the pole is used as a reference value. And this is a PID controller for pole position. Two PID controllers are required because with only PID controller for pole angle, the cart will move for infinite distance. Finally, the outputs of two PID controllers are summed. This will be control signal for the cart. Here, basic definitions for genetic algorithm are done. The attribute gene defines that each gene will be a random number between 0 and 20. Evaluate defines a function we want to use for evaluation. Mate defines crossover operation method. And select defines the method of the individual that will be selected for crossover operation. In the first line, because we have PID gains for two controllers, six genes are required. The second line defines mutation probability and method. The third line defines gene number for each individual and how it will be generated. In the fourth line, population is defined. 
Here initialization and generation of the population is done. Next, we do evaluation using gazebo simulation. In the while loop, as I described previously, selection, recombination, mutation, evaluation procedures run for specified generation number. Finally, the best individual is selected. Now let's run the program. In the first generation, the poll is not stable since PID gains are generated randomly, but as evolution goes on, the poll becomes more stable. After the simulation completes, the best PID gains for this model and objective function are selected.